welcome to Adventure Cove. It's so good to see you. I'm so excited because this morning we're going to be talking about Paul. And Paul is one of my most favorite characters from the New Testament. So I'm wondering, do any of you remember the day you were born? No, that's kind of silly, isn't it? There's no way we could remember the day we're born. But I do know that your parents probably remember every detail of the day you were born. It was so special to them. They saw you for the first time and they fell in love. You had little tiny hands, little tiny feet. Maybe ask your parents to show you a baby picture. It's so fun to look back and remember, I was a baby? That's crazy, right? But after you're born, you kind of grow up, right? And you become not so cute, right? You make bad decisions. You disobey mom and dad. Uh, life is crazy. Sometimes it's hard. And we know we're separated from God because we sin, because we make those bad choices. Wouldn't it be wonderful to know God instead of being separated from him? Wouldn't it be wonderful to be like a brand new person? Well, that's why I really want to tell you about Paul, because Paul got to become born again, just like you and I do. And being born again doesn't mean you're reborn, like when you're a baby, but I'll get to that in a moment. So Paul was like the super duper Christian. We talk about him a lot in here. He actually went on missionary journeys all around the country, the world where he lived, and he wrote 13 books in the New Testament. That's a lot of books. And I love reading his stories. He wrote letters to the different churches where he went and ministered to and encouraged them and equipped them and sometimes disciplined them. But you see, Paul, he actually started out as a bad guy. That's crazy, isn't it? You say, boo, Paul, from wherever you're sitting, boo, right? He actually hated Christians, and he went everywhere trying to capture them and put them in jail. He was a bad guy. How does a bad guy like that become a Christian who writes 13 books in the Bible? That's crazy, right? Well, his name used to be Saul. Say Saul from wherever you're sitting. Saul, Saul. right? His name was Saul. Okay, And he would go around and try to put Christians in jail. He was a very bad guy. And so one day he was traveling on the road to Damascus. It was a desert road and all of a sudden there was this bright light and Paul fell to the ground and he heard a voice say, Paul, Paul, why are you hurting me? And Paul kind of looked around like, who's talking to me, right? Who are you? Who do you think it was? I know who it was. He was Jesus and he was talking to Paul. He said, it's me, Paul, it's Jesus. When you hurt my people, you hurt me. Now go to Damascus and you'll be told what to do next. So Paul gets up off the ground, but when he opens his eyes, he finds out that he's blind. He can't see anything. So he leads the way, gets there, down the dusty road to Damascus. Meanwhile, in Damascus, there was a follower of Jesus named Ananias. Say, Ananias. Ananias. Ananias was a follower of Christ. And Jesus spoke to him in a vision. And he said, Ananias, I'm sending you a man named Paul. He's blind, but you're going to help him see again. Now, Ananias knew who Paul was. And he's like, I don't want to see this guy. He's going to put me in jail. This is crazy. He's like, I don't know about that. But Jesus told him, don't worry, Ananias. I'm doing something great. This man, Paul, is going to be a missionary and tell many people about Jesus. Now go. Ananias must have been pretty afraid. But Ananias trusted God. And so he went anyway. And he found the house where Paul was saying, and he said, Paul, Jesus, you know the one who appeared to you on the road, has sent me to help you see again. And immediately, the Bible says, things like scales fell off of his eyes and he could see again. What do you think the first thing Paul did when he could see again? Did he arrest Ananias and put him in jail? Did he dance around because he was so happy he could see again? What do you think? Well, it's even better than that. The first thing he did was he went and he got baptized. You see, Paul had become a believer in Jesus and he wanted to show the whole world that he had been changed. 
He wanted to show everyone that God had forgiven him for all those evil, terrible things he had done. And he got his name changed from Saul to Paul. He was born again. He was dead in his sin. He had disobeyed God. He had hurt Christians everywhere. But God gave him forgiveness of those sins. And when he was baptized, he was born again. When he believed in Jesus and put his faith in him, and he was a brand new person with a new name of Paul. Say Paul. Oh, oh good job. Then can you believe this? Paul went and began traveling all over preaching about Jesus. He was so full of the good news of Jesus that he had to tell everyone he met about him. Can you believe that? Could you imagine being one of those Christians that he had put in jail and now you hear about Paul? Man, that would increase your faith in Jesus and the power that he has. He kept coming and preaching. Actually, the Bible says that Paul said, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Savior. The old Paul was completely gone, and the new Paul was here. He was born again. I heard you to open your New Testament and read from some of the books that Paul wrote. Ephesians, Corinthians, Galatians. Those are just a couple of the books he wrote. And you will see the love that Paul has for Jesus and for God's people, Christians. And his life was completely changed. And guys, today we get to be born again. Because before we know Jesus and ask him to be in our lives, we're old. We're in our sin. And we have to die to that sin. And just like Paul, have those scales fall off of our eyes and be born again in Christ. We've been talking about that over the last few weeks, about putting our faith and hope and trust in, in Jesus. You know that with this coronavirus, with everything going on around us, a lot of people are dying and a lot of people are sick. And we need Jesus now more than ever. Because even when there's no virus going on, none of us know what day our life is going to end. And I don't tell you this to scare you. I don't want you to be scared about dying because we have hope in Jesus, but we need to put our faith and our hope and trust in him. And then that way we know whatever comes tomorrow, it's going to be okay. Because if I die, if you die, if your loved one dies, they know Jesus, they get to go to heaven. And that's the hope we have. And that's the hope Paul found that day. God loved you so much that he sent his son to die for you. Why? So that you could be saved and you can spend eternity in heaven with him. I want you to stand where you are in your room and hold your palms face up like this to receive this blessing. I want to give you this blessing. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 through 17 says, May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you and every good deed and word. My blessing for you is, may you help others come to know God's son, Jesus, the savior of the world. And we have this jumpstart song that you guys know and love, um, and it is from 2 Corinthians 2.15. And so stand wherever you are, keep standing, and join me as we sing. <laughs>